how the cultivation got affected because of the rules of scientific forestry till now we have discussed about how the people have different views when it comes to the growth of forest now moving on to the details of cultivation in india we have the shifting cultivation in practice shifting cultivation is known as ladding in southeast asia milpa in central america tavi in africa and channa in sri lanka like this it has different different names it is also known as sweden cultivation in sweden also we have different names according to the local names so it is called with different local names also so this shifting cultivation what is this shifting cultivation actually the shifting cultivation is nothing but a piece of land is been cultivated for a couple of years afterwards it is burnt and left out for a certain time period and then again they start doing the cultivation so this is also known as cut and burnt in rotation this is a main feature of shifting cultivation a piece of land is been cut the forest are been cut and they were burnt and in the ashes they sow the seeds after the first monsoons with the first monsoons coming over the seeds will go deeper into the soil and then they grow and they start to do the cultivation after 3 or 4 years they clear that one and they leave it empty for 12 to 18 years of time so with this gap again the forest will grow in that region so like this the cultivation is known as shifting cultivation this shifting cultivation has been looked weird by the britishers they thought if they are doing cultivation like this it will definitely affect the timber production and once the land is cleared and you are not able to do it for 12 to 18 years which is really a big blow for them where they cannot meet the requirements of their railway network or the royal navy shipping so they decided we should not encourage this kind of methods and they were also worried that when the burning of the shifting crop or whatever it is that is happening when they burn the crop the flames may raise up and they even burn the timber trees which is very harmful according to them so the crop will destroy the profits what they are getting so let us ban this system of shifting cultivation the british officials banned the system of shifting cultivation which forced many of the forest people those who are doing the shifting cultivation to leave the forest and move to some other places some of them have taken the different occupations while some revolted and resisted in small and large rebellions so this is the impact because it is connected with the day to day life of the people whatever kind of cultivation they are doing they are dependent on agriculture they clear a piece of land burn it sow the seeds do cultivation and leave that land migrate to another place but now this kind of system itself is banned so they don't know what to do next and they don't know any other type of cultivation also so they are forced to take some other occupations or some people who are very much well connected and now they are leaving their forests they are leaving their cultivation so the day to day activities are getting affected so that frustrated the people on a very large scale and many small and large rebellions took place after these laws were kept in place who could hunt actually hunting was been one of the activities of the forest dwellers the forest dwellers used to hunt deer partridges and small animals that was their regular activity like they used to go to collect the household food or they used to go for collecting the wood charcoal or they used to cut kill some animals like this deer or hunt them and get food for them but later the britishers after making these acts they restricted the activity of any of the forest dwellers in hunting the animals that was a severe crime and they will be caught under the act of poaching so the poaching is severely restricted by the britishers through the forest acts but the britishers also encouraged hunting they made hunting as a most sport game the sport of hunting tigers has become 
so extensively, so widely accepted that the hunting went on on a very large scale by the British officials, the kings, the Maharajas and everybody of that time and it resulted in the extinct and endangering of the species of the animals also. Here are the statistics for us. The Britishers used to believe that having wild animals is a burden and dangerous for society. It shows the uncivilized attitude of the Indians. So they want to civilize the Indians so they encourage the killing of the animals like 80,000 tigers were killed 150,000 leopards means 1.5 lakh leopards were killed and 2 lakh wolves were killed from the period of 1875 to 1925. Maharaja of Sarguja alone killed 1,157 tigers and 2,000 leopards till 1957 and a British official named George Yule killed 400 tigers. So the killing of the animals was looked very severely and they used to encourage the people to kill the animals by the British officials or the rich people or Maharajas or anybody. We have heard Mughal princes or prince just having an attitude of going for sport of hunting and coming back. But here they literally killed thousands of animals which later on the at the end only we have the environmentalists and the conservatives standing up and raising their voices saying that every animal has to be protected to maintain the balance in the society of forests. So then only the voices start to be heard and now the situation is that we have very less number of tigers in existence. Now the campaigning of Project Tiger is all are initiated to protect the tigers. These all are the results of what the Britishers did from 1875 to 1925. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.